it off while Gallagher was in an ad. The Habs did add six years to his contract yesterday. So if there was an award for the GM in the offseason so far, look no further. A lot of turnover on the roster in terms of who's not coming back. The Carl Alsner experience and never worked out for Montreal. And Max Domi was actually playing on the fourth line while they were in the bubble. Okay, guys. So now it's time to dissect the Habs roster after all these moves. And we do this. We want to point out this is a depth chart. So we're not actually projecting the line combos or the D pairings. Pierre, let's begin with you. At risk of being Captain Obvious, is this team better, worse, or the same as last year? Yeah, this team is much better. Uh, honestly, a pretty spectacular offseason from Mark Bergman. And it really stems from an opportunity that the Habs probably didn't deserve to get, which is to play playoff hockey. <laughs> So with the, the pause because of COVID and the 2014 return to play, they stun the Penguins and give the Flyers all they can handle. And suddenly there's this sense, especially with Carey Price and Shea Weber playing as well as they did, that this team's maybe closer than they were. So I think that affected the offseason. And this is Mark Bergevin trying to bridge the gap between the reset, the Suzuki's and the Kakaniemi's, to his veteran players that want to win now and that are tired of the reset. So they go out and get, you know, a backup goalie finally that can really support Carey Price in a compressed season next year in Jake Allen. Joel Edmondson, big and tough, a guy that they loved in return to play. The Habs were watching him closely. And, of course, to Foley and Josh Anderson, if he meets his potential, will be the most dynamic acquisition of the offseason. It's been a great offseason for Mark Bergeron of the Montreal Canadiens. Is it enough to be with the top teams in the East next year? I can't answer that right now, but it's a, it's a heck of an effort. I keep coming back to the word balance when I look at the Montreal Canadiens. And Pierre, you just laid out all of the moves, but what that helps Mark Bergevin and Claude Julien and his group is that the balance right from the top of the lineup to the bottom of the lineup is as good as anybody's in the National Hockey League because there's not much drop off. And yes, the focal point will be down the middle because it's a younger, inexperienced group, but that doesn't mean they're very, not good players. Nick Suzuki, I think, is a star. Uh, Dano is a fantastic two-way player. We saw Kakanyemi find another level in the bubble. And Ryan Paling, Jake Evans, those are young guys who are still finding their game. And you mentioned, to the point where Max Domi was playing on the fourth line, it's because those players in front of him outplayed him at that position and pushed through that made him expendable. So I love the moves that Mark Bergevin has made. Yes, if you want to talk about experience down the middle, it doesn't mean they're not good players. It just needs, means they're going to be sheltered by very experienced, talented players on the wing. All right, so we all agree it's unanimous. The Canadians have improved. But what do you, the viewers, think? We asked you that very question in preparation for today's show. And the majority of you, 80% of you agreed. You also feel the Habs improved. Pierre, all the Habs moves did not come cheap. They're now right up against the salary cap. So where does Mark Bergevin go from here? What's he do next? Well, it's interesting you mentioned that. I've had a few teams tell me uh, ever since Gallagher signed uh, last night that you know, that the Habs probably have to move a, a winger now, that, that they're too close against the cap. But my sense today in making a few calls is that the Canadians are okay with where they are. I mean, listen, Mark Bergman's always open for business. We know that. But I, I think that the Habs feel they can work with their small little gap there under the cap. Um, now, if a team came and, and made, a let's say, an offer for Thomas Tatar that made too much sense, um, you know, not to do, then, then who knows. But I think right now they feel they're okay with all their depth.